Well, we know thousands of people are making their way to NB Indy for the NBA All-Star Weekend. And this morning, advocates want to bring your attention to another serious issue, sex trafficking. Large-scale events with a lot of out-of-town visitors can create this increased risk for this multi-billion dollar industry. WRTV's Nico Panisi is live in downtown Indy to explain why. Nico. Good morning, Lauren. It's because there's a heightened demand. Advocacy organizations tell me that there are a large number of men with disposable income who actually make up a majority of sex buyers coming to our city this weekend. Traffickers not only know this, they rely on this to raise their profits, and that just leaves women and girls at risk. The Super Bowl, PGA golf, big trade shows, conventions. These are large scale events that attract thousands of people to a city. But what else do they all have in common? Elisa Bernard says sex trafficking. People that are being trafficked, the people that are being picked up during these things, aren't always from the region. And that's her worry, with more than 100,000 people visiting Indianapolis for the NBA All-Star Game and events. We do see that a lot of people who are coming in to purchase sex are from outside the region, whereas people who are being bought for sex are also coming in from outside the region. Bernard knows firsthand the dangers of the sex trade industry because she is a survivor. She was prostituted in her early 20s in the Seattle, Washington region. Today, she works with World Without Exploitation, a coalition of over 200 organizations across the country that work to fight trafficking and provide services to victims. So there's a couple ways that we can actually see that this is happening and occurring more frequently, especially around events such as this. So service providers are going to be getting, getting increases in the number of seeing their people that they are seeing walk in their doors. That's one thing. Um, law enforcement, yes, absolutely are going to be doing stings and operations around this. Targets are often our most vulnerable women and girls. People who are marginalized by um, their sex, their gender, um, their uh, disability, immigration status. Certainly we know that um, women and girls of color are disproportionately overrepresented across every jurisdiction. Um, and we also know that LGBTQ uh, individuals, particularly trans individuals. Yasmin Vafa with the nonprofit Rights for Girls says oftentimes trafficking is portrayed as someone being kidnapped or abducted, but it can be more subtle. There's often a grooming process when someone is very young. Um, most of the adults in the sex trade that I've met and worked with were first uh, exploited when they were children and first entered the sex industry when they were very young, often young teens. Victims are often the ones being arrested for sex trade. Fafa says we need to turn our attention towards the buyers and traffickers. Who are we holding accountable for their role in the sex trade? Um, the individuals who are often uh, in the situation as a means of survival or those who really are exercising their choice and agency um, and really have the privilege. And here are some warning signs you can look out for to identify a victim of human trafficking. They live with their employer. They give answers that are scripted or rehearsed. They appear to be fearful or submissive. They show signs of physical abuse or they're 18 years old and working in the commercial sex industry. And if you suspect that someone is a victim, you can call the National Human Trafficking Hotline. That number is there on your screen. Reporting live, Nico Panisi, WRTV. Some important tips there, Nico. Thank you.